Do you love watching hummingbirds in your garden? Do you love native plants with beautiful flowers? Well, you can have more of both by planting native eastern columbine. This easy to grow, colorful hummingbird magnet is a must have for the pollinator garden. And I'm gonna tell you all about how it grows, where it grows, and some of the cool critters attracted to it. Including a special one, which I'm gonna save for the end, so be sure to stick around for that. Eastern Columbine, Aquilegia canadensis, is a perennial native wildflower with a native range that includes most of eastern North America. It is a nice size for smaller gardens and grows from one to three feet tall, including the flower stalk, and has a spread of one to one and a half feet. It will spread slowly as a clump from the roots of the plant, but can spread much quicker by other means, which I will get to in a bit. If you love native plants that attract hummingbirds, be sure to hover on over and pollinate that like button. The deep green foliage with pinkish stems looks great in the garden, but the main reason Eastern Columbine is planted is for the gorgeous red and yellow trumpet-shaped flowers with their distinctive nectar spurs. Blooms appear from March through May, time just right for the return of the ruby-throated hummingbirds in many areas. In addition to hummingbirds, the flowers are also attractive to other pollinators that can access the deep nectar spurs, mainly bumblebees, butterflies, and moths. Smaller native bee species will also visit the flowers to gather pollen, but they can't reach the nectar. The flowers are replaced with cool looking brown seed pods in summer. The pods are filled with small, round, black seeds, and there are a lot of them per pod. Columbine is a prolific seed producer, and the seed tends to have a high germination rate, which brings us to the other way it can spread. Unless you keep Columbine deadheaded, it will drop seed and it will spread. I am perfectly okay with this in my gardens. Perhaps you are not, Everybody has different goals and objectives. The seedlings transplant well and can be dug up, placed in a pot to get some size on them, and planted in another location. Though not a major attraction, some seed is eaten by small songbirds, such as sparrows. If you have any experiences with growing native columbine, let us know about them down in the comments. When it comes to the conditions in which eastern columbine will grow, the phrase, not picky, sums them up. It will grow in moist to occasionally dry soils of just about any texture. I have seen it growing in sun-baked clay, in the moist soils along a creek, in rocky areas, and I've even seen it growing and doing quite well in sidewalk and driveway cracks. So unless your garden is in a swamp or on a sandy beach, the soil should be just fine for columbine. It is also quite adaptable when it comes to sunlight and will grow in nearly full sun to full shade. Columbine does need a couple of hours of sun every day, but will do well if shaded for most of the day. Once established, it does great in full sun and will produce good numbers of flowers. Seedlings, however, are not as tolerant of prolonged direct sun and some light shade cast by neighboring plants will help them along until they gain some size. Another benefit of Eastern Columbine that many native plant gardeners will find helpful is that it is nearly deer and rabbit proof. The foliage is slightly toxic and tastes bad and many mammalian herbivores tend to leave it alone. Even if columbine is nipped by a deer or rabbit, it bounces back quickly. It is a very resilient plant. While mammalian herbivores don't eat columbine foliage, there are several insects that do. You may notice leaf miner tracks on columbine leaves, and although they don't look good, rarely are they a problem for the plant. Another insect that can eat a lot of leaves from a columbine are the larva of the columbine sawfly, an introduced pest native to Europe. Again, the plant generally handles the defoliation well and the flowers are not harmed by the larva. This brings us to a small, nondescript butterfly that uses the eastern columbine as its sole host plant, the columbine duskywing, which is a type of skipper. It is found in the northern half of eastern North America and is much more common in the northern parts of its range. And although the species is considered globally secure, it is quite rare in the southern periphery of its range. So help them out and plant some columbine. The big, flashy, colorful butterflies get all the press, but the small, dull-colored ones are just as important ecologically. Columbine duskywing caterpillars overwinter in leaf litter at the base of their host plant, so please leave it there for them. Eastern columbine is a great plant to provide blooms in the spring and early summer, but your pollinator garden will need something blooming once things heat up in the heart of summer. To get some ideas for native plants that will do that, be sure to check out this video on plants that will bloom during the heat of summer, and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.